moving on from kind of like the diet and the components of the diet to kind of the process. So one thing, so I've seen definitely some people have suggested that you should cycle keto ketosis. So you go into ketosis and come out. So to kind of keep metabolic flexibility. Um, in the book, you, you all seem to be like, should be in ketosis the whole time. Could you kind of talk about that? Do you think it's good or bad? Um, yeah, I'm not a fan of the cycling idea there. I think they call it the five and two diet, you know, you, you stay in ketosis during the week and you cheat on the weekends, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, even cheat days. Um, I don't think it's, I don't think it's healthy and I don't think it's that uh, effective. I, I don't think that kind of metabolic fl flexibility, uh, I don't think it has to do with that. It's more your, uh, genetic predisposition to be able to metabolize carbohydrates or not. And you can actually test for that, um, genetically, um, but I, I think, you know, the idea of like the dirty keto, you know, I eat like low fat, but the keto food I eat is crappy, you know, processed food and, and, and pop and junk like that, you know, uh, unsweetened pop. Um, th that's not good either. Um, uh, I think it's good to narrow your eating window. You know, a lot of people are interested in intermittent fasting. Um, if you're keto, keto adapted, I don't think it adds any benefit to, uh, to fast for extended periods of time, like more. And you shouldn't, by the way, fast for more than two days, really, it starts to become unhealthy after that, we can we can go back to that. Um, but, but, uh, you know, narrowing your eating window to like eight hours a day is probably a good thing. Um, and, and it certainly helps maintain that state of nutritional ketosis. Um, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of the way I, I, I see that one. So I, I wouldn't, you know, I, I think, I think the uh, intermittent fasting is something that's of interest that, that can help a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't think that you should be cycling on and off it. And then you, it, the problem is, uh, you're, it, it's, it's almost like, um, uh, in your car, do you want to be driving at a constant speed or do you want to be hitting the brake and the gas and the brake and the gas, which is going to wear out your car faster? Right. <laughs> yes. So that, so that's interesting. I guess a side question on that. So if I do do intermittent fasting, so suppose I'm, I'm low carb which is yeah. probably, you know, I'm, I'm low carb, but I'm doing intermittent fasting. So, you know, at the end of my fast, after about 12 hours, then I should have eaten all my glycogen, right? And I'm now entering ketosis. So that would be kind of cycling. W would you agree? And so that would kind of say that if I'm on a low carb diet, then intermittent fasting may not be a good thing because I'm switching between the two. No, no, no. I think that's okay on, on that sort of, I think what you're describing on a daily basis is fine. Um, right. What, one of the problems with uh, intermittent fasting is how long those fasts are. So after about two days, um, uh, you start to trigger the activity of genes. We call them, it's the selfish, um, uh, the, the selfish gene theory is, is you start to tr trigger these genes that will, that will, um, uh, cause you to store fat when you start eating again. Uh, they're protective genes because you think you're going into a period of famine. And so if you're in an environment where you're going to be in a feast and famine environment, then you have to store fat like a lot of animals tend to do in over winter, say. Um, we have those genes in, in, our, in our body still. And once they're activated, they can stay activated for, for years and bias you towards uh, fat deposition. Um, you know, even with you know, those stories, the greatest loser and that sort of thing. They've actually studied a lot of people that have won that and they've had a horrible uh, experience afterwards because they often fast for very long periods of time and they really wreck their metabolism and, and they, they've turned on these, uh, I should call them selfish genes, I should say thrifty genes. Mm -hmm. They've turned on these uh, thrifty genes and, and that's caused them to put on, and, and you'll see that they'll, they'll put on all the weight they lost and more, right? You get into this yo-yo dieting thing. Um, but yeah, no, I think the intermittent fasting on a daily basis, just narrowing that eating uh, window, there's the, you know, OMAD one meal a day. Uh, so people have some success with that too. That that's fine. But remember, if you're fasting, you're not eating. And if you're not eating, you're not getting any nutrition. So, so if fasting becomes more and more a part of your lifestyle during the week, during those time you're eating, you better make sure you're getting, you know, full well-rounded diet, uh, in order to meet all those nutritional needs. And, and so I think some of the success of, intermittent fasting might be uh, due to calorie restriction. And, and that's not the case with, uh, with ketogenic diets. You can actually eat more calories on a ketogenic diet and, and, and lose weight at the same time, which seems contrary, but it's because of that gluconeogenesis uh, 
uses about 250 calories a day just to produce the glucose that you're not eating. Right. Um, so I think we, we did kind of touch on this before. So how do I know that I'm in ketosis? So it's like the keto strips is because, yeah, I guess the keto strips is like the only, or is the best way to do it at home, right? I'm not going to, I'm not going to do a blood panel. Uh, yeah, it's the cheapest way too. They're, they're inexpensive and, um, no, you don't have to do a blood panel, but, uh, if I have one around, there's a few companies that actually make, they're like blood glucose meters, but they just measure ketones instead. And, and they're kind of like, they're kind of like those inkjet printers. They kind of give you the device for a hundred bucks or something, but then the strips are you know, two right. bucks a pop. So if you want to measure that every day, it gets expensive. Um, but that, that would be the best way. Uh, there are also these breath ones are a couple hundred bucks, um, as I mentioned, but I don't actually worry about it too much. I mean, I get it measured when I, when I get my blood work done with the, with my doctor, with my physician. Um, uh, but I think, you know, when you're starting just to see if you're starting to produce ketones, those test strips work. Once you're keto adapted, you're actually going to be burning those ketones. And so they won't show up in your urine. So it's not useful after that, but in the, the first little while it's useful. Um, and then, and then, you know, if you're, if you are a diabetic and you're measuring your blood sugar, you can get units that measure both at the same time. So they do the, the and, and so working towards that ratio of one to one, you know, the same, like three uh, millimoles per liter uh, and three millimoles per liter is a, you know, that's a good match. Um, so you're basically trading off your glucose for, for the, for the beta hydroxybutyrate, which is the main ketone that's produced. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon. <laughs>